Well, hello then, welcome back to the Web Monkey Show. My name is Alex, and big news once again because WordPress 5.5 is here, and it's been nicknamed Exton in honor of Billy Exton, whose music I am not familiar with, but I'll definitely be uh, checking him out. Uh, once I'm done with this video. So what exactly is new with WordPress 5.5? Well, there have been some major changes which I'm going to talk to you about. And they mostly involve uh, speed, security, and then uh, some really interesting changes to the Gutenberg page builder. So what are these changes, right? So first things first is the fact that uh, with WordPress 5.5, your images will now be lazy loaded. Now, if you don't know what lazy load is, it's, it simply means that when you go to a page that has images in it, the browser will not load those images until you, the user, have scrolled down to the point where those images should be displayed. So the idea here is that if you have lots of content, lots of text, and then down, 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 you've got an image, your browser will not load the image first. It will simply load all the text. And then when you scroll down and you get to the point where you're supposed to see the image, that's when the browser will now load the image. So the whole point here been that it helps your pages and posts load much faster. And uh, it's always been a great way to increase the speed of your posts, your pages, and WordPress 5.5 now automatically uh, takes care of that. So. My advice to you here is if you have any plugin that you've installed specifically for lazy loading, you don't need the plugin anymore. You can simply deactivate the plugin and uh, let WordPress do the lazy loading for you. Now, regarding security, you now have the option to ena enable uh, auto updates uh, for all your plugins. If you go to the plugins page, like what you see right here, you will see on the right hand side automatic updates and uh, enable updates option. Now, I'm a little bit iffy about this particular feature because auto updating your plugins can lead to some unnecessary issues. It happened to me a few weeks ago when uh, Learn Dash had this new update and I updated the plugin and it ended up breaking my site because I was using Elementor with Learn Dash. So, the thing here is I would recommend that you don't enable auto updates for all your plugins. There are certain plugins that you can do this for plugins that are independent. They stand on their own. As an example, on my plugins page right here, I would en enable auto updates for Akismet because Akismet is basically a standalone. All it does is it fights against spam and it's not involved with any other plugin. But other plugins in here like uh, the Get Weed, uh, add-on which works with Gutenberg. I will not en enable auto updates for those. Uh, basically, any plugins that you use primarily for displaying content, I would recommend that you don't enable the auto updates for them. But other plugins that are standalone that handle security, uh, fighting against spam, maybe even SEO, you can uh, en enable auto updates uh, for them. But just be careful. Make sure that you always have your daily backups uh, in place just in case anything goes wrong, you can always uh, reinstall a backup. So you have that option. You also have the option for your themes as well. You can also enable auto updates for your themes. You go to any of your themes, you click on theme details, and then right here, for example, you will see the option to enable auto updates. Now, enabling auto updates for themes, I'm a bit more comfortable with this because generally you don't have as many issues uh, auto enabling uh, updates for your themes as opposed to. Uh, <laughs> enabling auto updates for your plugin. So I think with themes, you can do this one. I think uh, it's perfectly fine. So that's it for security and the speed. Now for the Gutenberg page builder, uh, they've definitely made some major uh, improvements in here. Let me show you uh, what I'm talking about. Let me try adding a new, uh, a new post. So right here, for example, you now have this uh, big blue button with the plus uh, symbol inviting you to add a block. Now, what's interesting here is that if you click on add block, you now have blocks patterns and then reusable. It used to be just, it used to just be uh, blocks and then reusable, but now you have patterns. Now, patterns are simply pre-built uh, columns or sections of content that you can simply just apply on your page. So as an example, you've got one for buttons that you can just simply click and apply. Uh, you've got one for three buttons. You've got one for two columns with a header. Uh, you've got one here for two columns, some text, one here with three columns, and so on. So basically, 
it's just like a pre-configured uh, column or section of content that you can simply uh, click on, you apply on your page and then simply make uh, whatever edits that you need to uh, make. So that's definitely an improvement. But one very interesting thing here is that if you go to blocks and you discover that, wait a second, I actually don't have a block for this particular kind of functionality. You can search for that block and Gutenberg will search on the internet for a possible add-on that you can use. As an example, if I typed in a slider here, just as an example, right? Now, Gutenberg by default doesn't have a inbuilt slider uh, block, but by typing in slider in the search block right here, I now have the option of adding this block uh, called slide. Now, in all honesty, I think you might find this to not be as useful because Say as an example, right, I'm trying to add a slider block. Notice that the top option in here was updated over a year ago. So I'm definitely not going to go with this particular option. And the other options in here don't look that convincing. You have one called uh, Go Sign, only has 80 active installations. And then you scroll down here and uh, none of the options are actually that impressive. So I think for certain kinds of functionality, you might get lucky and find an add-on that's well-reviewed well-maintained that you could actually use uh, with Gutenberg. But again, Gutenberg is still, and I will always say this, Gutenberg is still in its early stages. I guarantee you that probably six months from now, this would become very, very, very powerful. And by then you would have had a lot more developers developing add-ons to support Gutenberg. And I think this particular kind of functionality will become uh, extremely useful. Now, one other major change they've made through the Gutenberg page builder is with the image block. So say for example, I want to add uh, an image. Uh, let's do this, I'm gonna click on image right here. Let me upload one from my media library and uh, let me choose this one, click on select. Now you now have the option to basically uh, edit your images directly from your Gutenberg page builder. So right here, you have this button right here where you can crop the image. So I can click in there and then I can decide to crop, crop my image. I can decide to actually even zoom in to a particular uh, point in the image. So maybe I wanted to focus specifically on this particular point right here. I could do that if I wanted to. And this is simply uh, fantastic. You have the option to also change the uh, aspect ratio. So you can go with a landscape, portrait, you have all these options in here. Uh, you could even decide to rotate the image. You can do all of this directly uh, from the Gutenberg page builder. And I think this is a very, very neat functionality. And I don't know of any page builders that do this. Uh, I might be wrong, but Elementor doesn't do this for you, like directly from the back end. Uh, I don't think BFI Builder does the same. I'm not sure about Divi, but in any case, this is definitely a, a massive improvement to the uh, image block for uh, Gutenberg. Now, there are some other uh, additional new updates, but I think I've covered... Uh, okay, so there is a new sitemap functionality right now, and what they say here is that uh, WordPress 5.5 includes an XML sitemap that helps search engines discover your most important pages from the very minute uh, you go live. So that's very interesting. I think that's a very, very fantastic uh, addition. And... Um, that's mostly it. There are some other, like I said, some other uh, additions for like developers and things like that. But I think I've covered the most important uh, changes to WordPress uh, with WordPress uh, 5.5. So I will include this particular link in the description box below so you can read more about uh, Xtin or Xtine uh, if you're interested. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, of course, be sure to like the video. And if you have any comments, what do you think about this update? Do you like it? Uh, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not subscribe? Hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So that's it, Alex, once again for WebMonkey. Stay safe out there and I hope you enjoy uh, WordPress 5.5. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.